All right, so here's the situation. My wife noticed that we didn't have good water pressure yesterday in the house. So I came out here and I checked the pressure switch and you can see, I gotta be careful not to touch it, that those points of contact are burnt. And so I'll show you how this works. I'll show you how to replace it, but I've gotta replace this whole unit. Safety is very important. So you wanna make sure that you shut off the power to your well pump. Just double check and make sure your power is not on. This is a little wand that you can touch the wires with, see if any of them are hot, and it's not beeping, it's not lighting up, so this is definitely safe to work with now. So the way this pressure switch works is when the tank falls below 30 pounds of pressure, that's per square inch, these little contact points should click up against there, turning the pump on and it will fill up the water tank to 50 pounds of pressure. And this is the electric coming from the house, so you want to make sure that you reconnect everything the right way. You've also got to basically remove all the water pressure from this pump, from the um, tank. This is the water line feeding the whole house, and so I'm going to turn this valve off again because we're going to be draining the water. I also want to point out that the people that installed this didn't do it right on a couple of different levels. Number one, each of these wires should be on the left side. That's because as you tighten the screw clockwise, it's going to pull the wire in tighter. If you tighten it and it's on the right side, then this could actually work its way out. That's fairly minor, but right here, you should have some type of protective guard so that the sharp edge can't really um, abrade that wire and also to keep out a little bit of the moisture. Before you remove the wires, I suggest taking a picture on your cell phone for reference and labeling each wire so you know what sequence they go back in. And then just loosen up these screws and take all the wiring out, including the ground wires down here on the green screws. All right, so all the wiring is disconnected. Before we remove the old pressure switch, we need to drain the tank. And so I'm just using a garden hose and you see I've got some other hoses hooked up to this for other purposes, so I just undid one and then I'm going to turn this on and open the valve. Open. Alright, here's our pressure gauge and you notice that it's dropping as the water drains from the tank. It's still going to take a couple minutes to get down to zero pounds of pressure. All right, we're ready to go ahead and remove the pressure switch, and I'm using vice grips on that little standpipe. A little adjustment, make sure you're holding it really tight. Okay, and then using this crescent wrench, adjustable wrench, I'm going to unscrew the pressure switch. Okay, another thing that I immediately see as a problem is they really shouldn't have had this tape covering up this valve. Um, so I'll clean that up. And I bought the exact same model, except there's one slight difference. That this has a little lever so that you can manually override the low pressure switch if you need to. Um, so you notice how clean those new points are right here versus those old burnt ones. And again, this is going to make contact when it reaches low pressure, turn the pump on. So this is a short piece of pipe tape or thread tape or Teflon tape. I like this better than pipe dope. And you wanna make sure that you put it on on the correct direction. Now, this is going to be turning clockwise when I thread it on. So that's this way. So you wanna thread the tape on in the same direction. And you don't want the tape covering up the opening where the water is gonna be coming up. All right, and so now I'm just gonna thread on the new presser switch, and you wanna make sure that you're not stripping the threads or anything like that. So just start it by hand, and finish tightening it by holding these two wrenches, just repeating what we did on the other one. The proper way to do your wiring, anytime you have a junction box or anything with this sharp edge, is you wanna get these little plastic inserts and you have to read which side goes in the box. It's sort of like a one-way valve so that the wire will only go in one direction. And then feed the wires back through. 
This pump is about 10 years old. It's been out here protected, but it's still got a little bit of some corrosion. So I'm just using a little piece of sandpaper, brightening up the copper ends on here before I make the connections. So these go in, it takes a little bit of some force. You want to give yourself some slack, some extra length. So pull up those through. should be good. So now they're all inside where the pressure switch is going to be covered. All right, I'm starting with the ground wires. Notice that I bent it going in the direction that the screw is going to turn and that way it will actually tighten it instead of pushing it backwards out of the box. Now just connect your wiring the same way it was in the original. Notice that I'm starting from the left and curving it around so that as you tighten it, it actually pulls it into the connection. So some of this is pretty tight, close quarters. You might need to use some needle nose pliers to push it right against the screw while you're tightening it down. All right, now that all the wiring is connected, it's all nice and secure and snug. Before I do anything else, I want to make sure that the charge is correct. And basically there's an air bladder in here that according to the manufacturer, when it's empty, it should read, 4 PSI less than the cut-in pressure, which is 30. So that would be 26. So you put this on there, you read it like a tire, and I'm getting about 21, so it could use a little bit of air. So I got my air compressor, you just inflate it like a car tire, and so I'll inflate it until it's 26 PSI. We're almost ready to see if this is going to work, so put the cap back on here. This is just a loose cover. Okay, I'm gonna go turn the electricity on and come out and show you how to get it all back in order. All right, I've turned the electricity on. Just to confirm that the electricity's on, I'm using my detector, and you see that we're definitely getting some hot electricity coming in here. Now, I've got this switch in the off position. Let's talk about that for a minute. When the lever is in the upright position, that's off. And then there's start, and then there's auto. This is gonna be set at automatic, all the time. However, to, to get water into it the first time, I have to manually put it in the start position until it fills up to about 50 pounds of pressure. Now, it'll then get kicked down into the auto position, and if there's ever another problem with this pump, like if the points burn out again, I can come out and flip it into the start position. It's like a manual override. There we go. And so let me get a view of the pressure filling up as I'm holding this in the start position. Yeah, it looks like 10 going up to 20. I'm going to take it all the way up to 50, a little over 50. All right, it turned off at 50. So now I'm going to see if it works through the garden hose before connecting it to the house. All right, I'm going to cover up all this wiring with a little plastic box. Make sure that it's nice and snug and tighten this down. 